Samantha from Dress Match Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a fun uh, collar necklace. So I've got a piece of pearl white here rolled out on my thicker setting of my pasta machine and I've got this really small bib cutter. Any small one will work. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that and I'm going to cut out the shape of my piece. Then just smooth along those sides, like so. Pop that onto a piece of plain printing paper and bake that for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. Okay, then when it's done, it should look like this. So you can see it's nice and firm. If you need to have, if you need to give it a sand, then give it a quick sand with like a 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, but this one's perfectly fine. So I'm just going to take some clay. Any clay will work. And I'm just going to stick that down and have that mostly level. Okay. And I'll put that off to the side so that's ready to go when I need it. Then we're going to bring over some liquid clay. And I'm going to be using Kato Clear Liquid Clay for the top coat. Just dab a little bit on there. And spread that over the surface. You just want it on the top of the piece. You don't want it on the sides or on the back. And just coat the entire piece like so. Okay. Then bring over your piece of clay again. And just gently pop that down on top of it. And press. And then I will just smooth that out again. And then we're ready to start. So I'm going to be using Sculpey Liquid Clay. I have red, blue, yellow, and gold. Okay. And I'm just going to get that running. Okay. Just squirt it over the surface like so. And I'll get the yellow, make sure that's running as well. Okay. Then the blue, again, always make sure that it's running before you start squeezing, because sometimes these bottles, depending on how long you've had them for, the clay may have separated a bit, and so you might want to just mix it up a little bit before uh, starting. Okay, and then lastly, I have a little bit of gold. And I might add some black. I'll see how it looks uh, when I'm done. Just want a little bit on there. Don't want a lot. Okay, there we go. And I'm quite happy with that, I don't think I want to use black. So I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to swirl it a little bit. I'm not going to do too much, but I am just going to make the pattern a little more interesting. I might grab some red from there and pop that in there. Grab some gold, swirl it through. And do that as much or as little as you want, completely up to you. I don't really want to mix the colours up uh, too much. And that's why I'm not bringing in any uh, red, or not red, uh, black, because the black's quite a strong colour. And I'm not using white, because we have white as the background. So there we go, once you're done and you're happy, if you want to add a little more, you can always just take a bit and add like so 
if one color seems a little much for you. And you can fuss with it and keep in mind you can use any color uh, liquid clay you want. It doesn't have to be these uh, colors but I do like the primaries. I think it looks quite nice. And yeah, then when you're done with that you want to remove that, put that onto a tile and then I want you to bake that for a full hour at pre-most recommended temperature. Okay, and here is how it looks out of the oven. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. So now I'm going to uh, put some eye pins into the uh, ends here. And the reason I'm doing it before uh, varnishing it is just because when I apply eye pins I'm generally pinching down quite hard and that sometimes uh, causes fingerprints on the varnish so I don't really want to do that so I'm going to try to prevent that. Uh, you don't have to varnish this if you don't want to as it is all just polymer clay but I do want to give it a little bit of a shine. So I've got an eye pin here. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it in there pressing down and twist it. Okay. And then once I'm a certain way through I can just twist it with my fingers like so. Okay. And then just get that in there nice and tight. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay. There we go. Now you can string that if you uh, don't want to varnish it. But I'm going to bring over a little bit of Varathane. Uh, Pearl X varnish will work as well. Or you could even use resin if you want to. I don't really want to use resin because uh, this, the liquid clay, because of the amount that we put on here, it's given it a little bit of a domed effect. So you'll probably find that the resin uh, has a tendency to spill over the edges. So I am going to just use Varathane. And I'm just going to continue to give it a nice, decent coat of varathane. Then leave that to dry for at least an hour before moving on to the next step. Okay, and once that has dried, you should see that it has a nice shiny finish to it. So now we are going to attach one half of a toggle clasp on each end. So I'm just going to grab the eye pin like so and I'm going to open that up bring over the uh, clasp slide that on and then we're going to close that up again like so and then just twist that eye pin a little bit so at the top of the clasp lays flat like so. Okay, then I'm going to pop that to the side and I'm going to bring over a rubber cord. I've already done the one end. So all we need to do for the other end is to grab a cord end, slip that through and neatly close that up like so. Grab a jump ring, slip that on along with the other end of your clasp. Okay. And then you can attach it to your pendant. Like so. And I quite like the look that the toggle clasps give. If you don't like the look of the toggle clasps, uh, all you have to do is attach these cord ends with the jump ring to the eye pin. Obviously cut this in half and attach two more cord ends and apply a bail, or not bail, a uh, clasp at the end there. But yeah, that's basically it for today's tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please do let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to support this channel, please do consider subscribing. It's free and it really helps me a lot. And also, you might want to, since I do post videos every single week, if you would like to support the channel further, becoming a member or a patron really helps as well. Or 
Purchasing any of the tools on my Etsy shop as well really helps. Uh, there are links to that in the description below. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.